Couldn't get it to work, I'm sorry. Don't blame him, blame Papa John. Papa John. Blame the internet and they're using Java script. How dare they use Java? Okay. Let's take a look at number one. All right, so um, really important about number one as you're doing this is that most of what you see is actually not important. That's the wrong review sheet. This review sheet. <clears throat> That's not the right review sheet. This is a correct review sheet. All right, so let's see. Okay, um, there are only two numbers that are really important here, For, or three numbers. Firstly, we have n there. Secondly, we have x bar here. Thirdly, we have s here. There's the only three numbers that are important. We are going to look at the median just in a second, but not particularly all that as important as we might think it is. So let's take those numbers down. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the standard deviation is um, S and not uh, standard deviation? It's a great question. Um, the reason why I know that this is S and not sigma is because this comes from the sample of 13. Okay, and what does that tell you exactly? Oh, it's a sample. Sigma is the whole population. It's not population. like the whole population. It's not like the whole population. It's just a sample. Yeah? Okay, so uh, number one. <clears throat> and, you know, we don't even have to go through all of this. It's about mu x bar is equal to 220.231. Number two, sigma x bar, that's going to be approximately equal to me turning on the power. Oops. Here we go. Um, 58. Point fifty seven twenty one divided by the square root of thirteen. Let's trim that to something reasonable. Thirteen being a sample size. Thirteen, yeah, sample size of thirteen, where it says n equals thirteen. Uh, since we're only computing, we don't really have to worry about three. Um, because again, this is kind of like multiple choice. But if you take a look, the median and the mean are pretty much the same, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So median is, so that kind of tells us that we probably are a single peak distribution or a symmetric distribution. Can we just say because the mean and median are both? Yeah, median is approximately equal to the mean. We have a <clears throat> single peak or symmetric distribution. <coughs> So we should be fine on a multiple choice. 
question. We don't... Well, we don't need to check this always. All right, let's compute things. First thing, n equals 13. This is going to be a t, right? t star is going to be equal to, oops, we don't really need n. We need the df, right? df equals 12. So we get back to the calculator. How do you know df equals 12? Because n is 13. Oh. I always forget that. Did it give you the degree of freedom? No. No. Oh, you did n minus one. N minus one, yeah. And I don't know why my calculator isn't working. Maybe it's your computer. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was ugly. So my calculator is not working. Sure. Is the variance? We have multiple choice in the test, right? Yeah. Then why isn't the, um, the review like multiple choice? Just like, you know, is it to make it more difficult. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Time to actually just kill it, right? Mm -hmm. TI smart view, yeah. Kill. That took care of the problem. Wait, what are you the uh, smart view process. Um. I killed my calculator because it wasn't responding. No. No. <coughs> Standard error is <coughs> sigma over root n for or s square root of p and no square root of pi one minus pi over n okay so we want an inverse t uh for confidence what's my confidence interval 90 degree of freedom 12. It's a great program One point seven eight two. One point seven eight two. Okay. So the rest of this is easy. Margin of error. Use the inverse t eight. Margin of error is equal to t star one point seven eight two times sigma x bar, which is sixteen point two four five. Awesome. And finally, we have the interval is going to be equal to 220.231 plus or minus 28.9486. Now, I'm not sure what that's equal to, but I'll read it from the answer book. That's all it says, huh? Okay. Good enough. On the test, you want us to actually do it for me? Uh, if this is a multiple choice, then you're going to look at the answer choices and choose appropriately. Okay. Mr. Yeah. what do you want us to round to? If this is a multiple choice, round to whatever place of value you see in the answers. In FRQ, then um, you, you take a look, let the numbers themselves inform you. Like, this is three decimal places. I mean, that's kind of crazy, I think. I mean, yeah. if you're looking at 220, what's one thousandth? It's like totally insignificant. Yeah. So uh, this one, I'd be happy at the tenth or hundredth place, really. But it's not going to hurt if you put it No. Okay. Just your pencil. OK, two. Do we have a proportion? We always put four decimals. 
Proportion is always four decimal. Two. Uh, you want to compute a 90% confidence interval for the mean of a population with an unknown population standard deviation. Sample size 30. So the T star that you would use is, this is nice. It basically just go to the calculator, right? Where's my program button? Um, <clears throat> inverse T, right? Ninety percent <clears throat> sample size is thirty, so we're gonna do twenty nine for our degree of freedom. And that gives us our number six nine nine. One point six nine nine. Your phone? Questions? Easy? Mm -hmm. yeah. I hope you get that question. Um, and it's like we're using the rate yeah. inverse um, too because um, it's um, like we're looking for the mean, and then we'll use um, Z, like cheese, whatever star. Yeah. Proportion. Yep. Okay. Z stars mean T stars proportion. Three. <clears throat> to assess the accuracy of a laboratory scale, a standard weight that is known to weigh one gram is repeatedly weighed and the mean is computed. Suppose the scale ratings are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 0 0.01. How large does n need to be so that a confidence interval 95% has a margin of error of 0 0.0001? Okay, well, what is the margin of error? It's the T star, T -star times the S, S, S over radical. Yeah, S over square root of N. Actually, we don't even have S in here. We have sigma, don't we? <clears throat> Margin of error. So here we, we have sigma, so we can actually use z. And just sigma without the square root? Hmm? And just sigma without the square root? No, then? you have to use that. Wait, why, can, why can we use z? We, we can use z because we know what sigma is. Okay. okay. It doesn't tell me s, it tells me sigma. <coughs> so, um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. <clears throat> Are you sure it's over the square? Yeah. Oh, so we use we also use z star for a population. Ye okay. If you use sigma, uh -huh. then you also use z star. Okay. okay. So that's equal to z star. What is z star for a ninety-five percent confidence interval? No. Yeah, ninety-five percent confidence interval. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting myself. We want this to be margin of error to be equal to. <coughs> Thank you. 0 .0001. <coughs> Gosh. Okay, so that's going to be our equation. I better use a pen here. We're going to be doing some equations. First of all, let's get our Z star. We want a 95% confidence interval. Is that what I'm reading? Yes. 95% confidence interval, so uh, let's see. Inverse norm. Inverse norm. 
for a 95% confidence interval, you're getting 1.96. So you have 1.96. Oh, why am I using that? 1.96 times sigma. What was sigma? Point zero one. Yeah. Divided by the square root of n. You want to make that equal to point zero 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 one. And your job now is just to solve that. Yeah. Um, so when the problem asks for the inverse normal, when it says ninety five percent confidence interval, that's when we have to put like point zero two five or point nine seven five. Yeah, if you use a regular calculator inverse normal. Okay, but if we use your program we just put it in. Exactly. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, you know, it really doesn't matter how you do this. You know, my job here isn't really to teach you algebra. Okay. So, um, what is that? 0 0.0196 over 0 0.0001 equals the square root of n. So it looks like n is going to be equal to 196 here. Which is not what they're saying. Oh, I forgot to square. Whoops. 196 squared. That's huge. One hundred and ninety-six squared. There we go. Thirty-eight four sixteen. Thirty-eight four sixteen. Next one, what if the margin of error is, no, if the interval width is 0 0.0003. Okay, well, if the width is equal to 0 0.0003, that means the margin of error is going to be half that, 0 0.00015. Okay, um, the width is going to be, let's imagine, we have this confidence interval. It's going to be x bar over here, plus or minus a margin of error, right? This entire thing is the width. The width is all the way from end to end, which is basically two margin of errors. So if the width is 0 0.003, Divide by 2, and the margin of error is 0, 0, 0,015. So we so this is a number line. Yeah. Okay. X bar is in the middle. This is the margin of error of left, and the margin of error on the right. From the very left part of the interval to the very right is called is the width. Oh, so the margin of error for each side. <coughs> what was that? The margin of error for each side is Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I get it. Okay, then we use the same thing. 1.96 times 0 0.01 over square root of n. That's going to be equal to <coughs> 0, 0015. 0 0.0196 over... 0 0.00015 equals the square root of n. And we can now work on that. N equals, let's see, 1.96 times 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.00015. And then we're going to square that. Yeah. 
So uh, you're supposed to round that up. So 17,074. So n should be equal to 17,074. OK? Questions on that? That's kind of different than what we've been doing, dealing with that margin of error. I found that if I wanted my margin of error to be this, then I needed to take this many measurements. Is this two different problems? Yeah, two different problems. Oh. And here, if I wanted the margin of error to be this number, I need to have this many measurements, which is a lot of measurements. Sigma x bar, no. Okay, you just do the z <clears throat> Yeah. Number four, the weights of nine men have a mean of 175 and a standard deviation of 15. What's going to be the standard error of the mean? Uh, that's great. 15. Standard error is going to be equal to, what is that, t star times sigma over s divided by square root of n. No, that's margin of error. What am I saying? I'm so sorry. That's the margin of error. This is the standard error. Why did I put 15? What number is this? 15 because you go This is 4. OK. OK, so standard error then is going to be equal to uh, s, 15, divided by the square root of 9. 5. That's it. Which is 5, yeah. Yeah, that's not that bad. Questions on four? Remember that standard error <clears throat> is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Five. We have a mar we have a 95% confidence interval for the mean reading skills for a population. What would the margin of error in this interval be? Okay. Remember, we have the we have this right here, a margin of error on the left, and a margin of error on the right. So if the width is equal to the right endpoint minus the left endpoint. <coughs> and that's going to be 2 times the margin of error. <coughs> oh my gosh. OK, so what is the width? This width is going to be 2.28, no, 54.2 minus 44.2. And that's going to be equal to 2 times the margin of error. Margin of error should be 5. Z 
star times six. Okay. I think you're thinking of a different problem. Sorry, okay, good. Six. All right, the level of dissolved oxygen in a river is an important factor, indicating, important indicator of the water's ability to support aquatic life. Wow. You collect 20 milliliter samples at 15 randomly chosen locations along a stream and measure the dissolved oxygen. Here are the results. Check the assumptions for a T interval, construct and interpret in 95%. Wow. This is basically just like question 15, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. It's, it's not that long. long. It's that long. But it's not as long. Uh, no, it is. It's not. It's the checks. How many times for it? Yeah, exactly. The checks are long. They're not particularly difficult. It just takes forever. OK, so let's clear this off on our list. <coughs> And let's put these numbers in. Is that 4.53, 504, 329, 523. Oh gosh, this is crazy. Sorry to interrupt, but I need to tell you stuff. 4.13, 5.5, we're recording by the way. 4.83. 4.4, 4, 5.42. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is not funny for you, is it? <laughs> gosh, I almost finished too. 329, 523, 413, 55. 483, 44, 542, 638, 401, 466. Am I hearing neat freaks over here? Yeah. How do you not I have OCD, I'm sorry. Do you actually? You're in the right room. Here, just for you. That's on record. Huh? I think I have a friend whose dog is in CD. <laughs> what? <laughs> they have an amazing story show. Honestly, I don't know who it is. Like. Yeah. All right. It is what it is. It's fine. It is what it is. Wait, wait. There was something else. There was something. What time? Are we still on the same time? Yeah. Okay. What is that up there? Is that for her? A cockroach above. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's tapped a rat. I don't know. No, that's not her. I have a thing for her. Yeah. From the kit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. In my car, if you could bring one. Ooh. Okay. The end? Yeah. Okay. You should play the music at the end. There we go. Cleared list just for you. Wait, so how do we make There's only one list? Yeah, we only need the one list. Okay, but then we need like the one where Yeah, because that had two bits. Yeah, in the previous one for question fifteen there was a before and after measurement. Yeah, so we had to find an increase. Yeah, but here we just have the one list, so okay. that's all we need to do. All right, let's do our one var stats. Now we're on L1, right? Got to be aware of all of this as you're doing this. Stat. Calc. OK. Here we go. <clears throat> That's going to help me. This is a really big. 
Can I make this smaller? Oh, good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Our it, our assumptions. Number one. What was x bar? Mu. Sorry, mu x bar. It's approximately equal to 4.77. You don't have to do mu x bar equals x bar. No, not particularly. Do we have to do that for number 15? Wait, you know what I forgot? Is this a mean or a measure? This is a mean. Mean or a proportion? Mean. Mean. Yeah. All right, so um, sigma x bar. approximately equal to S over root N. S was 0 0.939. Yeah. Divided by the square root of 15. There we go. 24, 24, that'll work. <clears throat> and the condition is, or is this less than 5% of the population? Are there, so um, yeah. 15 is 5% of 30 of 300, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Wait, how do you like, 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 how do you should be more than 300, I don't know, There's how many samples? 20 milliliter samples? There should be more than three samples of water in a stream. Is this a stream or a river? In a river. It's a good thing we're doing this now, then. <laughs> Number three. Okay. Number three is normality. Hello. Hello. Um, are we told that this is a, sorry, is this a large number of samples? No. No, so we can't use CLT. Are we told that the population is approximately normal? No. no. Does my sample look reasonably um, or does our sample deviate from normality? No, so we're, this is, we are now at condition three, right? Yeah. All right, so the first part of condition three. Sorry. Um, let's take a look at the histogram. Histogram for L1. Zoom nine. Oh, hey, that's that's probably the best one we've got yet, right? Probably histogram. I'm gonna put it here just for reference. You don't actually have to copy it down, just for reference. Histogram looks. Hmm? What are the two steps? Oh, I'm on three because. There was a tell you that it's normal. Yeah. It wasn't a large sample. Large sample. It didn't say it was normal. It doesn't say, yeah. It, this wasn't a large sample and this wasn't a normal population. Mm -hmm. So we have to do the third one. Like earlier in today, we had like an example of a histogram which was right skewed. But for this one, for example, it turns out to be normal. But yeah. is there any instance where we would see one and just be like, there's no way this could be normal? Um, if there's more than one peak. So more than one peak, or... It looks like upside down normal curve. Yeah, a U curve. Okay. That's not good. Then we wouldn't have to look at the other things, we would just know there's some normal. You would still look, I mean, this is, academically, you would still look at them. Okay, so this is um, single peak, approximately single yeah. peak symmetric, right? That's pretty good. What did I do? Yeah. Okay. 
Let's take a look at the next plot, which is... Modified box plot. This is good. No outliers. How do we get to this part again? Okay. It's always stat plot. Okay. Because do you see any points that are Okay. So the box plot <coughs> shows no outliers. And the last one you're going to check is normal probability plot. Zoom nine. Hey, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Looks pretty linear. Yeah. Uh, you're probably doing using the wrong list. Okay, so normal probability plot. is approximately linear. Since normality is not contradicted, we can use a T distribution. OK, good. We've just checked all the conditions, which is the hard part, right? Now we can do all of the other fun stuff. <coughs> what happens when you can't use a distribution? Hmm? What happens when you can't use a distribution? You do it anyways. Okay. You mentioned that you shouldn't be using a t distribution, and then you use it. So, like, let's say we have like one more minute left on the AP test, and then we don't. You will. You're not going to have one minute left on the AP test. That's not going to happen. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so where are we at? We have to do our calculations now, right? Can I turn it on? Yeah, of course. Just put it in the box. Okay. What's our degree of freedom? 14, good. T star is going to be equal to inverse. Oh, does it say what 95% what, uh, confidence interval? 95% confidence interval <laughs> degree of freedom of 14, right? Two, one, four, five. Okay. Let's do our margin of error. Margin of error. That's going to be equal to two point one four five times. What's my S? Oh, two point one four five times twenty four twenty four. Times sigma over root n. Times sigma x bar, or yeah, sigma x bar. <laughs> Finally, mu is going to be equal to the mean. What was the mean? 477 plus or minus 0 0.5199. And I'm just going to write it down here. 
425 and 529. Okay, so we are 95% confident that the mean amount, mean level of oxygen dissolved in water in the river is between 4.25, does it give a measurement here? Millimeters, milligrams per liter? Milliliters per liter. Oh, I see milligrams per liter. And 5.29 milligrams per liter. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah, you can. Because, <laughs> like, you're going to use it anyway. <clears throat> if this is multiple choice, you do whatever you need to do to get to yeah. the numerical answer as quickly as possible. Including going backwards and plugging in the answers. Including going backwards, <laughs> plugging in answers, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I would put the units. They they tend to be sticklers about that on the AP test. It's not calculus. They don't care. Okay. Can we move on to number seven? Yes. No. A polling organization announces that the proportion of American voters who favor congressional term limits is 64%. This has a 95% confidence margin. What? Confidence. I think it's supposed to be a margin of error of 3%. Yeah, margin of error of 3%. This means that, okay, so this is <coughs> interpreting confidence level. Interpreting confidence level. Okay. Confidence level is the um, success rate of the um, method. It has nothing to do with the um, measurements, okay? Nothing to do with the measurements itself. It's also not a percentage. <coughs> Which seems kind of weird. So let's see for number seven. If the polling was conducted again at the same, um, sorry, probability. It's not a probability. We're in, <clears throat> there's only two options. Either, either our interval has the actual value of the mean or it doesn't. Okay. One of those is true. It's not like 95% of the time it will be true. It just either is true or it's not true. There is no probability. You're either right or you're wrong. So if the poll was conducted again the same way, 
there's a 95% chance that the fraction of voters favoring term limits will be between 61 and 67. Does that have, is that tell me about the success rate? No. Not really. Not correct. B, there's a 95% probability that the percentage of voters favoring term limits is between 61 and 67%. Okay, is that about a success rate? No. no. If the ha C, if the poll was conducted again in the same way, there is a 95% probability that the percentage of fav voters favoring term limits in the second poll will be within 3% of the percentage favoring limits in the first poll. Yes. That doesn't sound like a, that doesn't sound like a success rate. Question, when you, the margin of error is 3%, and huh? then that 3% corresponds with what? That tells you a range where you think the actual value is. It's the plus or minus. It's 3% of 64. Within 3% of 64. Okay. okay. I'm saying, we were saying that the actual percentage that vote that are uh, in favor should be somewhere between 61 and 67%. Okay. Okay. We're either right or we're wrong. We don't know which one of those two it is. But we do know if we repeated this method a bunch of times, 95% of the time, the interval that we get, the interval that we get will contain the actual value of the percentage. Can you repeat exactly what, so what, can you repeat that? Sentence? If we repeat these methods, if we took repeated samples, 95% of our samples will contain the actual percentage of uh, people voting for in favor of this congressional term limits. So the of exactly. D, 95% of voters between 61 and 67% favor, favor of term limits. No. no. That's six, 95% has nothing to do with the voters. 95% has to do with the success rate of the method. So none of the above are true. So we're saying that <coughs> the method uh, is successful at capturing the true percentage of voters in favor of term limits 95% of the time. Has nothing to do with the measurements at all. Has to do with the success rate. We get the eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, a random sample of nine hundred is selected from a large population. One hundred eighty are regular uses of vi vitamins. Thus, the proportion of regular users of vitamin users of vitamins is point two. That's one eighty out of nine hundred. Let's demonstrate that. Twenty percent. Good. Thus, the proportion of regular users, oh, sorry, what is the standard error? Standard error is equal to, well, I should just say it's sigma uh, pi, which equals the square root of, square root of 0.2 times 0.8 divided by 900. Done. Yeah, that's all. 
standard error is sigma pi. It's fine. Any questions on eight? Wait, why did you say sigma this time? Is it because it's a it's proportion? No, sigma here refers to the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. I mean, it's confusing because we use sigma in a bunch of different contexts. <clears throat> and they're all slightly different. Yeah. Square root of uh, what, pi, pi times one minus pi over n, that's not at all derived from uh, <laughs> sigma pi. Is it? It's not derived from sigma pi, no. Okay. I just want to, because you put, you know, sigma pi equals that, so it's just, that's just different ways to find it, right? Now I'm not sure what you're asking. <laughs> okay, so you wrote sigma pi equals square root of pi times 1 minus pi over n. Yeah. But that's, those aren't related except for the fact that they just equal the same thing. Yeah. So they're not, yeah. You can't S sigma pi is the name of our variable. Oh, you're doing sigma pi. Like, Subscript pi. Okay. Maybe I should put that as subscript. Like that. Okay. No, no, no. I see why you're confused. Yeah. So, um, so for means, um, the standard error is um, s over root n, and for the sigma pi, it's square root of one. I mean. Right, pi times one minus pi over. Yeah. Right. It's two separate things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did you even have to? Maybe I should let's put let's put that here. Yeah. S standard error for means is equal to sigma x bar and that's equal to S divided by Sorry, sigma divided by root square root of n. Which is approximately equal to s divided by square root of n. Okay. There are estimations of each other. Standard error for proportions is equal to sigma pi which is equal to the square root of pi, thank you, pi times 1 minus pi divided by n, which is approximately equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. That helpful? But p isn't pi. p is not pi. p and is an estimate of pi. P is from the sample, pi is from the population. Number nine. <clears throat> A confidence interval for pi, the proportion of Canadian beer drinkers who prefer lion red, is found to be between 23.6 and 28.2. Interpret the interval in context. Okay. No, we just need to interpret. Okay. So what we're saying is, ninety. We are ninety-five percent confident, or we used a method that successfully captures the proportion of Canadian beer drinkers 
which is like all of them. Is it, it's too cold, nothing else. Yeah. Who prefer yeah. Lion Red? 95% of the time. This method gave us <clears throat> um, um, this method yielded the proportion of beer drinkers who prefer red lion red is between 236 and 282 percent I would rather use confident. I'm trying to kind of give you like the idea about what that confidence level really means. Okay. Usually when you write it down, you just say you're 95% confident. Okay. Any questions on nine? Let's look at 10. Thank God 10 is easy. We're looking for a Z star for a 70% confidence interval. Z star is the uh, norm, right? Inverse norm. Inverse norm. You said 70%, right? Mm -hmm. So 1.036, gosh. I hope you get this. I hope you go on the task. It's interval. Good. <clears throat> you program it. Is it hard? Um, if you know basic, there's a computer, there's a programming language called basic. If you know that programming language. What is basic? It's a programming language. Just a little. Huh? Not yeah. cool. When I was like, <laughs> I think I st when I was in fifth grade, I learned how to program in basic, like really. Like on your calculator? No, on my computer. Oh, okay. That kind of helped. <coughs> yeah. Which one? Inverse norm? Program. No, you're right. You're right. Like Remind me before you leave and I'll put it on there, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to do question 11 and then we're going to save 12 and 14 for class tomorrow, okay? So let's do 11 now. Eleven. Well, maybe we'll do twelve also. I don't know. Yeah, we should do twelve also. Okay, so eleven says a ninety-five percent confidence interval for the mean of a population is computed from a random sample and found to be nine plus or minus three. Okay. So we can conclude that. 
is between mm. Yeah, mean should be between 6 and 12, right? Yeah. Yes. So what do we say for what, question 11 here? Mm -hmm. If we took many additional random samples and each computer, 95% of them would contain me, mu. So basically the same thing, right? But we can just like, I'm going to take this and like literally copy and paste here. We, like, <clears throat> that uh, successfully captures mu. It's mu this time, right? And 90% of the time, right? 95% of the time. This method yielded a mu. Didn't they already do this? They do it two times. What team Twice? Yeah, they what team is that? Football. Oh, oh okay. It's cheer. You know, may I join? It's cheer. Wait, wait, wait. Is it football season over? Why are they like, going crazy? Right? Mary's joining football. She's going to be a linebacker, all American. What? She committed to USC. Yeah, but there's a game. It's football season. It's football season. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Let's like go back towards like number fifteen, like number thirteen, where all we said. Wait, wait. Let, let me go to twelve. Okay. Twelve. Last one. Twelve. Okay, 95% confidence interval for the mean a reading achievement score for a population in third grade students is 44.2 and 54.2. Suppose we calculate a 99% confidence interval. Okay, that means we're going to be more confident, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be more confident, should we make the interval bigger or smaller? Bigger. Yes. Yeah. To be more confident confident that we are correct, we should make the interval wider. Okay, that means we're going to have less of a chance of being incorrect. Because we now have more possibilities for that mean. <clears throat> this will, this new interval will have less risk of being incorrect. Do you need to explain any further than that? No. So let's say like number session fifteen wants you like explain like we are nine. Can you, is it okay if we just say like what we said before where we say we are ninety five percent confident mean level of confidence? Absolutely, you can absolutely say that. Okay. The reason why I didn't do that for number nine and number eleven is because I'm trying to kind of illustrate what exactly does a ninety five percent confidence interval mean. What does it mean to be ninety five percent confident? Okay, any more questions? We knocked. Great. Not that bad, right?